Robinson and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Welcome back to the workshop modelers and uh, we're going to be continuing on the elevators of the quarter scale chipmunk and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at the trim tab. Um, I'm still <laughs> contemplated which bit to, to work on next after this. Um, there's little bits of fuselage to finish off uh, around the tail end, um, but I'm kind of putting off that. Uh, I'm, an all, I'm also putting off attacking the wing, which I really want to do, but it's kind of like a big momentous thing. So I'm sneaking up on the build again. So I think I'll go to the, to the trim tab. Um, so first of all, I've, I've taken a piece of sheet stock just out of the scrap box, and it's undersized compared to the thickness of the um, of the wood that we need. So I've I've just marked out uh, what we need, and uh, we'll cut that out and, and, and start looking at it. What I'm thinking of doing is is, is making it out of a, a very you know simple balsa wood sheet uh, and shape it, but then I'm thinking of shrouding it in a litho plate. So we'll see how that goes. So a slight change of plan. I was originally going to use litho plate, but uh, I've gone away from it because of the shape of the flange at the back. It's a little bit too difficult to uh, to deal with in litho plate. It, it, it is doable, but actually it'll be easier the way I'm doing it now. Litho plate's great if you want to simulate rivets, you can actually put them into the litho plate before you do it. But in this instance, the rivets have got to match the rivets that are in the tail plane. And uh, that's going to be a little bit more awkward. So I shall leave the rivets to all be simulated rather than have some that are made by dimpling. So I'm just laminating up What I think will work, and the, the idea with this is going to be that I put some 64th ply that's slightly oversized between two pieces of eighth, and then I shape it down to the ply. So the ply is going to create my uh, the lip that you would get on the back of the uh, trim tab, quite uh, a distinct lip. So we need to get that right. So that, that is how it's going to look. And you can see that there's a lip on the back. So we'll weight that down. These, by the way, are my new um, fire bricks, and they've come from the back of a fireplace. Uh, well, I, I haven't taken them from the back of a fireplace. They've they've come. Um, that, that that's what they come as. They're sold as uh, fire bricks. So I've had a, somebody quite rightly commented that I shouldn't really be using these tegulars. Um, as my fire bricks for when I do brazing and sol silver soldering and stuff like that. It was suggested I use real fire bricks because these can shatter if you get them hot enough. I think with the amount of heat I'm putting on them, they, they, it wouldn't be an issue, but to be safe, I followed the uh, viewer's advice and I've got some proper fire bricks. Right, we'll let that dry. I'm gonna use L285, which is the resin that Phil Clark sells from Fighter Racers. I'm going to do a gram, if I can do it, maybe two grams. That's a gram. So that's two grams of catalyst. And it's two and a half to one. We'll put 
five grams of resin in. Reset it. Oh, I've made way too much here. I should have stuck to one gram. Slightly over. Should be all right. But there's way too much resin there. We're going to waste the stuff. Just trying to <laughs> think in my mind if I've got anything else that I need to resin. Uh, I can't think of anything offhand. Oh, I could do the tips. That's a good idea. I could do the tips. If we're happy that they're sanded close. I'll do the tips of the elevators and the tips of the rudder in glass because they uh, probably would appreciate it. Now the reason I'm doing this is because when I cover this in fabric or whatever I use, Diatex, Seconite, Auratex, Solatex, whatever I cover it in, the underlying surface will always kind of dent and it won't be crisp because it is actually a soft balsa wood underneath. And even though you've put the covering on it, it doesn't make the surface hard underneath. Um, so this this should just toughen it up a little bit make it feel a little bit more substantial underneath and more rigid um, also i want to add rivet detail to this panel or the pop rivets underneath here um, and pop rivets well all, all rivet detail tends to sink into the wood that it's applied to if it's just bare wood so usually you would apply rivet detail to a glassed hard surface so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the rivet detail to this hardened surface. Now, normally you put cloth in on, obviously, to, to really give it a good surface, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try leaving the cloth off just to try and save some weight because we are working on the tail end of the model here. And usually you're, you're looking at a five to one ratio. So any weight you add to the tail means you've got to add five times that weight to the nose to get keep the CRG where you want it. Um, so I am kind of conscious of the weight to a certain extent. Um, I am a firm believer that uh, a lighter model flies better. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that disagree with that, but a, a heavier model flies faster. And uh, I'm trying to make it appear as realistic as possible. Um, and I think a lot of people just get carried away with um, they're all fast, so if yours is a little bit faster than somebody else's that is already fast, you don't think yours is any faster than the norm, when actually they are. So um, I like to keep my models as light as I can. But um, this model is going to be a bit of a workhorse, so it's uh, it does need to be fairly robust as well. So, uh, so there we go. Anyway, this is what I'm going to do. We'll, we'll try... Just putting glass resin on it, glass fiber resin, and see if that firms up 
the structure. I suppose in theory I could put it on the ribs as well, make them stronger <clears throat> and this leading edge, but, um, but I think I'll just do the tips, they're the bits I'm really thinking of at the moment. Right, I'll let that set, go off and um, and carry on. So while waiting for the epoxy to dry on those surfaces I thought I'd do a little bit of detailing which obviously is what the channel's for. So what I need to do is cut a strip of lith plate and it has to be four millimeters wide and I'm, I'm going to make a length you know several lengths of the stuff that's that's my plan there to there. This is the thin litho plate. It's the point 0.3. I just score it and then I could bend it. But what I'm going to do first, before I do that, is every seven millimeters I'm going to make a mark. And the way I'm going to do it is actually to mark off on this piece of ply my seven millimeters. I'm making myself a seven millimeter ruler effectively. You'll see why in a minute. It's just a little bit easier to do this once if you're going to repeat it. I could have made one on the printer I suppose and just printed a piece of paper with seven millimeter increments. It's quite difficult to measure seven millimeters, that's, that's the issue. So then if we come right down the side, should have put those marks on the edge, shouldn't I? Never mind, it's close enough. I can see what's going on. And then I mark out my seven millimeters increments. All the way down. Nearly there. I can assure you it is quicker to do it this way than to actually use the ruler. And more accurate. <laughs> Having just done it long handed. Okay, so there's our seven mil increments. Now remember it's only that wide, it's four millimeters wide. So two, two millimeters in from each edge, I have this tool and it has a, a, a very slightly sharpened brass tube and a correspondingly sized piece of piano wire with the end rounded off. I'm not sure if you can see that. And what I do is I use it as a punch. So I position tool over the line and I give it a sharp tap. I work my way right down the line. Now I had meant to do it on the other side because it gives a more impressive look but I've done it on this side. It doesn't really matter. One side's aluminium and the other side's a sort of a printer's ink kind of blue colour. It doesn't matter because the whole thing's going to get painted anyway. When I did it on the dry run I actually cut the strip first before punching it and that was a bit of a mistake because it ended up this little tiny sliver of lith plate that I was trying to hold still while I punched and of course it curled up into a little ball. It worked all right, it worked all right but this this is a, a slight tweak on the method. Then when you've done that way you then turn it over and you can see all your dimples that you've created 
and you take your piece of brass tube that's polished at one end and you put it straight over the dot and you give it another tap. And what this does is it takes a little tiny bit of the dimple out and also gives a slight impression of a ring around the dimple. And these rivets are really quite convincing. Now the, the only thing that does concern me is I, I do this on sixth scale models. This model's quarter scale. So we'll have to see if they actually look right big enough on the quarter scale model. If you've watched the Oster video you'll have seen I did this on the on the panels around the cowl on the Oster. It's very effective, it looks great. There we go. And then if we separate these two, and if you remember I don't cut anything, I tend to score it with the scalpel lightly, and you can bend it, and then you bend it back the other way. And then bend it back again. And then bend it back. At which point it usually separates. If you were to cut that with scissors, you'd have a really curly edge. And what you want is a nice flat edge. So not really very easy to see on the camera, but if I'd done it the other way up, those little marks would have been ri ri uh, rivets and they would stand up, but um, I've done it the other way around. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's going to get painted anyway. Okay, so now we go and apply this to the rudder. So here we have the rudder. I've added a couple more uh, diagonals, which are present on the full side. This is a chipmunk drawing and you can see the various bits and pieces and what we're trying to simulate are this section up here and when you look at a photograph you'll see that there's rivets all the way along here and they're all visible. This is the first piece I made and you can see with the rivets pointing coming from behind the lith plate so that you can see the silver the strip I've just done, I've done the other way up, so the dimples are on the, the, the printed side of the litho plate. It doesn't matter because it's going to get painted. And then all you do is you mark out the rudder where you want it and you simply glue them down. Now gluing these down, if you use thin CA, it really doesn't take and it doesn't glue very well. However, if you use a medium CA, it sticks instantly and it's perfect and it even wraps right around. So what we're hoping is that when we cover this in fabric, these sections here will all show through the fabric. That's the plan. So I'm going to do this side now and, uh, and I'll just show you how easy it is to, to, to stick. So. So I'm going to take one from there to there, okay, so from there, and I want to make one of the raised rivets right on the tip there, so I'm going to take that a little bit further, mark where I want to cut it, I'm going to, I'm going to cut it like that angle, okay. And then put a 90 on it. And at this end, I'm just going to trim it to a bit of a shape like that. Right, and that one is going to go right there, like that. Okay. 
So I'm simply going to use my medium CA and put a really light line down the middle of my panel. Position it where I want to position it. About there. And then see how quickly that's stuck? Perfect, eh? There's another one that runs to the front, to there. How do I want to do this? I think what I'll do here is just put a bit of a chamfer on that. And it runs to there. Actually, I might turn it around that way. Smear of medium. There are actually several more sections of these dots or rivets. Several more of these panels, and I'm not absolutely sure whether I'm going to add them or not. There should be a whole row right down here, and it would be quite nice to fit them, but it might alter the the gap on the shroud. It, 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 I don't know, and because there's a shroud right up against you, you may not see it. So I think these are the critical ones, and there's also one that goes to the back. So. You might think it's a bit silly to go to all this trouble for um, something that really isn't going to be seen underneath the fabric. Well, that may be true. However, we will see if it is seen. And if you can see it, you'll think, oh, that was worth doing. Now, thing is, do I go down here? Probably not. Um, the other interesting thing, if you look at the drawing, is that we have these little gussets. Now, if you remember, when we did the elevator, I tried to simulate those by chamfering the wood and, and creating these sort of gussets. Now, we could do the same on the rudder. We could make a little hole, circular hole with a file, and then just sand the edges off. So, a good friend of mine has had some success using this stuff. Now, this is a polyester tissue. It's very tough, very light, and he's used it to, um, to cover the tail surface. In fact, cover all the fabric surfaces on a fifth scale hurricane. And he's really pleased with it. So, for the channel, I am going to try it and give it a go. Now, it's suggested that you apply it with balsa lock and then use you use heat to shrink it. So I'm actually going to apply it with dope, which is what he said he did as well. Um, whether or not it was because he couldn't get hold of balsa lock or, or what, or, but I don't know. Anyway, he suggested that 50-50 dope worked fine. So that's exactly what I'm going to try. I'm going to start with this upper edge because that's an obvious place to to start I think and we'll see how it goes. Well, the dope passes through it nicely which is always a good sign. So I'm actually going to pick it up and Get dope all over my fingers. It's always good fun. I had hoped it would stick a little better than this. It's actually lifting straight off. Let's try what we had to do with tissue. But I can actually feel the surface is nice and wet, so possibly the brush was 
very loaded with um, thinners. I've just cleaned the brush, so let's see if this helps. Hmm. Well, that's not going very well, is it? It's not sticking at all. It's all in the big guns. This is uh, neat though, 100% from an aircraft supplier. Let's see what that does, eh? And that seems to be sticking a little bit better now. Well, I must confess it's not going on very easily. Okay, so what I've found is, if I just put a little bit of dope where I want, you know, on the framework, and then just gently pull it taut and then wave an iron over it that um, sticks it down sticks it down beautifully so that is exactly what I've just done all the way around the edge of this so I'm gonna just make a cut along here I want to tuck it around here and then I think well <laughs> it's all experimentation isn't it really I think I'll I will cut along the front of this so this is 25 gram per square meter apparently I think that's what uh, Mike Woodhouse described it as and it's called a poly polyester tissue now I don't think it'll be as strong as um, say solar film uh, solar tex or Orotex, but it's obviously a lot lighter so um, let's get that hinge out of the way obviously a lot lighter and not as tough, so, but tougher than tissue. And tissue is something I use quite a bit of, usually, for models. Um, but it, it is very easy to, to puncture tissue, so this, this might be a better solution. So let's, let's see if we can get this edge to go down, and that will give you an idea of how this is working. So all I'm going to do is just paint some dope along that edge. I'm just slipping it underneath the polyester tissue and then let's just try applying the iron and see if it'll uh, stick it down which as you can see is doing just that Obviously, if you put it over the areas where there is wet tissue, it's uh, uh, you know where there's dope, it's actually sticking to the dope, so that's not so great. Well, if you just rub it with your finger, you'd think it would stick down, but it doesn't. But if you put the iron on it, it does. Then it's as almost as if it, the iron's pushing it against the dope, and then the iron is drying the dope out almost imme immediately, and and therefore sticking it but I think a smaller brush might be an idea. 
I used this brush thinking I was going to be um, ironing through it, uh, doping through it, not ironing at all. So see if this goes down. Which it has. So the dope is working in the same way that balsa lock would. It's acting as a, a, a heat activated glue, which is cool. Now, will it survive a heat shrink? That's that's my, my query. I'll do it all the way around the edge and get it stuck on. And then I'll try, I'll, I'll bring the camera back on and we'll try and heat shrink that and see how it goes. So there we go. It's covered quite well. Um, I think balsa lock might be easier to use, but it has gone on and it has sort of ironed down and then what I've done on the ends, if you can see it, I've just put a coat of dope over the top just to seal it all down. Now, as you can see in through here, there's some wrinkles. Okay. Well, not anymore. As you can clearly see, it shrinks quite nicely with a bit of heat. And that's a nice, fairly taut weave, but there are holes. I can see gaps. So we'll have to see how well this seals with, um, with some dope. That would be my one concern. And my friend John does, um, you know, he, he attached it using this, uh, using dope rather. So um, he says it will work and so it should. I'm trying to get it to stick right down into the, um, those rivets that we created. Because obviously seeing that lot, getting that lot to show through was one of the reasons why I wanted to use such a lightweight material as this polyester. Right, well, I'm going to try and do the other side. If this doesn't work, we can always um, think about doing something else. But um, at the moment, I'll, I'll persevere. So I've done the other side, similar sort of technique to what I did the first side. So you can see there's a fair amount of wrinkling at the top here and all over not not a huge amount but there's a crease right through there look so let's just see what the heat does i've got the iron set to about 130. it was at 150 a little while ago but I, I thought maybe it was a bit too hot so i've turned it down to 125 but it hasn't got there yet it's sitting at 140 at the moment so I'm just and it's shrinking it really easily I'm just worried I'm uh, a little bit too hot. So, um, but I'm being careful, and that crease just vanished straight away. There's wrinkles over there, look, and they've gone straight away. So it shrinks really nicely. It's got quite a quite a shrinking power. And uh, this side I perhaps put on a, a little bit looser, shall we say? Only a little bit looser, but as you can see, that's um, that's shrunk down very nicely. Now, one of the other advantages with this, which I hadn't really noticed, but I, I hadn't initially thought of, but I, I have now noticed, is that where you overlap the material on itself, such as the leading edge here, you can barely see the join. Whereas if you're using Solatex or one of the Orotexes, you know, one of the iron-on coverings, you will see, you'll see the line where the um, material meets and overlaps. It creates a ridge. Whereas this is more like tissue and it hasn't done that. So I think all in all, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Whether this will um, 
will show through quite the way I want it to. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a few coats of dope over the structure, especially the top here, because this side I put quite a bit more more on, and it seems to have pulled down into the. I want to be able to see these lines a little bit, not too much, but enough. Um, and remember, we're spraying this silver, so silver will show up anything underneath, and I'm hoping these will show up. Anyway, I'll give it a few coats of dope, and then uh, we'll see how it looks after that. So here we can see the um, polyester tissue it has been applied, and there's four coats of dope on there. Um, and that's a little disappointing because you won't be able to see it on the camera, I'm sure, but there's several pinholes around here. And that's after four coats of dope. Um, also, this side is lovely and smooth, the one with the pinholes, but this side is really rough. It's as if the polyester tissue has a side that it would prefer to be, you know, face up or face down. And I have seen this before where you need to put shiny side up or dull side up. But when you look at the, uh, the polyester tissue, well, it is maybe slightly shinier on one side, but not. Hmm. Yeah, well, there you go. Maybe I hadn't looked at it more carefully or carefully enough. Uh, there is a shinier side and a slightly dull side. So, shiny side up, I would suggest. So, the rudder is done anyway. Um, I like the effect I've got at the top here, where the... Uh, you know, th this this is a, an aluminium section that is uh, riveted to the to the rudder airframe, and uh, and then the fabric's over the top of it. So, I like the way this detail is going to come... is going to show through, I hope. So, the tension's pretty good. I've not, I've managed to not stick down on the trailing edge, which is, which is really nice. Um, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. And this is just tissue uh, rather than a proper fabric, but it took a long time and it's taken a lot of dope. Um, so I think what I'm going to do for this chipmunk is I'm going to go back to using the Seekonite that I used for the Oster, which, um, I'll, uh, I'll cover one of these in Seekonite and I'll let the camera run and you can just see how, how I do it. Uh, I'm going to put it on with balsa lock. Uh, my balsa lock yesterday was completely, well not completely, but was very, very jelly-like and certainly wouldn't brush. But as you can see, I've recovered it. Um, and all I did was add a little bit of water to the pot, then give it a good stir and then gave it a shake and then I've left it overnight and it's it's gone back to balsa lock again, I think hopefully. So um, so I'm going to cover the elevators in um, Seekonite, which is a full-size uh, fabric covering material. So I'll put it on with balsa lock and then iron shrink it and then we'll dope it. Um, what I've done underneath the elevator, there are some sections that have uh, where the screw heads are that hold the, um, the fabric uh, holds the the wingtip or the elevator tip shroud to the to the frame to this this end rib, um, and it's it's lots of pop rivets. So what I've done is I've taken some litho plate and made the plate that you can see showing through the fabric, and some of these along here. The ones along the back, I'm going to try something else for this. Uh, that that's the top surface, so I've actually used those rivets all the way along. But on the underside. I'm going to try something slightly different. Now I've done this before on my little chipmunk, um, but I'm going to give it a go. So if you are into the helicopter scene, you'll know all about this company, Vario. Um, they make all sorts of scale products, which are fantastic for the helicopter guys. Well, they're fantastic for us as well. So what they do is they make these uh, plastic rivets. Is you make a very small hole and then you cut how much of the rivet you want and you just push it into the hole. These are really nifty. These are an Archimedes drill and um, if you hold hold it on top, uh, put it against something that doesn't really matter and then move this arm up and down, you can see it spins the, um, spins the drill bit. Very useful. 
So I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's handy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this is a fiddly job, if ever there was. Now you'll recall these tips were actually um, glassed. I just used the resin, I didn't use any cloth, just, just the resin. And it's made them quite nice and hard. I gave them a lovely sand this morning and they're nice and smooth now. But things like this, if you just push these into balsa, they would actually push in much further and the heads would sink. But because the balsa has some resin to build up its strength, we've not got a problem. Just make sure they're all down far enough. And then I'm just going to run some CA along there. And then wipe off the excess. Stick my finger to the tissue. So there we have that one. It'll be interesting to see what the difference is when the fabric's on top to the upper surface and the lower surface with these. I'm, I'm actually thinking I wish I'd done these now, a bit fiddly, but actually these took quite a long time to make these litho and the rivets, so um, probably the time is, is no different. Anyway, we'll do the other one. One of the other things I did was I glassed this trim tab and that's now nicely sanded and that is lovely and smooth, nice and straight. And that'll take primer really nicely. And you'll recall there's a there's a ply core. So the very tip, the, the, the very edge of the trailing edge of the tailplane, which is <laughs> potentially going to get really easily damaged, is now ply and it's glassed. So uh, it, it's going to be very ding proof. So that's ready for primer and, and, and use. Okay, so I think all we can do from this point just get the seekonite out and we'll cover the tailplanes. Oh, cover the elevators. I'll get it right in a minute.
So all I'm going to do is, now that it's on around the edges, I'm just going to shrink this wingtip and see what we get, see if these rivets are still going to be visible. Now it won't stick, they, they can't stick down because there's no balsa lock underneath all this, so all I'm doing is literally shrinking. And you shouldn't really do this on one side before you put the covering on the other side, but I just thought I'd do it just so that you can get a feel for what's happening. And that's lovely and tight, really nice. And a couple of coats of dope, and hopefully that'll be sealed. So it's much quicker than the polyester, although this is a polyester, uh, but this is a woven polyester as opposed to um, a tissue. So I'll do the other side and then we'll, we'll take a look at what we've got. So there we go, modelers. We've reached the end of another session. The tail surfaces look great. I think uh, you'll agree. The uh, Diatex or Seconite or whatever you want to call the polyester fabric that we put on with Balsa Lock has gone on really nice and really nice and quick and is very tough and uh, is probably more normal for this size model. The rudder, which I've done using the polyester tissue, has actually come out very good. It has taken five, maybe even six coats of dope to seal it. Anyway, sorry the video has been a bit long, but it couldn't really find a place to edit it down to make it much shorter. So um, anyway, if you've enjoyed it, click like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.